Thursday. Come on. I know you got a cold. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Come on, get up. Uh, 19 minutes after 7 o'clock and uh, 16 days into October. And yep. somehow I got a cold somehow. Yep. All, of a, all of a sudden, Robin. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, my voice sounds different. I know. I should just pretend surprised. Larry's not here. <laughs> oh, you could have an alter ego. I should just pretend I'm uh, like Larry's cousin or something. Oh, there you go. I do sound way different, don't I? Yeah, you do. I, could, I didn't even hear myself until you came in with the dog this morning. <laughs> you got a deep sexiness. I thought the cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's about where it stops. You know, I thought your dog was a cat. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cosmo loves coming in here. He, just has, he looked for you and didn't see you under the production. Uh, so so uh, well, how does this happen? Back. Overnight. Actually, yeah. it wasn't overnight. It was like a couple of days ago. I noticed mm-hmm. I had a sore throat. Yeah. And this morning, I didn't even know my voice was not quite there <laughs> until you came in. You brought your dog. You and Ronnie came in. Yeah. I was in the back at the sink washing up my coffee cup. <laughs> and out of my peripheral, I thought I saw a gigantic rat. And I, I'm not lying. I really thought it was a rat because I didn't think anybody was here because you came a lot earlier than you normally do. Yeah. <laughs> So out of my peripheral, I really thought I saw an orange. I mean, yeah, an orange. I thought it was orange color, even though your dog is black and white. I don't yeah. know why. But <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was an orange cat or maybe a big rat. <laughs> but I, as, I figured as soon as it saw me, it said, "Oops, I'm going the other way," because it because it disappeared. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I and I couldn't hear you and Ronnie because I had the water running in the sink. So. Yeah. <laughs> Cosmo was happy he found you and then, you know, turned around. I said, okay, I was right in my uh, world. There he's here. So we have, a, a, we have a pretty good show today, if I can make it through it. Uh, 7.35, uh, we're going to talk about, well, well I want to talk about what the governor's candidates should have debated last night. And, and, well, I guess we'll tell you what they did debate. There's a lot of people writing on social media, Facebook's mostly the one I look at. But mm-hmm. I did see some tweets also from Twitter uh, from people who are what they call watchdogs or watchdog groups. Uh huh. Like Tax, what is that company? That Not company, but what is that group called Tax? Oh. Tax uh, Watch, I think it's called Tax Watch. Yeah, yeah anyway, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, they're saying they didn't talk about taxes, they talked about other things. And, <laughs> uh, but do you know what the big news was about last night's debate, right? I heard you this morning when fan. you were putting it together. You know, I'm a I fan. Didn't know. Charlie Chris had a fan mm-hmm. in his podium mm-hmm. <laughs> to blow on him. <laughs> and apparently Rick Scott's rules said no fans. <laughs> <laughs> and so they weren't going to debate at all. And then Charlie Chris came out. And the audio, well, I'll, I'll show you the audio okay. af- after, at 735. But the, <laughs> it's kind of funny. You know, this will haunt them forever. Yeah. That's this is going to haunt them forever. We also sent a letter to Adrian Wiley, who's the Libertarian candidate, who was not included in the debates. No. So sad. That's bad form. Our letter was to invite him to be on, and uh, so far we haven't heard from him. Mm-hmm. By the way, if you're a candidate, take advantage of opportunities when radio stations invite you. Exactly. You don't want to underestimate the power of a listening audience, especially on a talk show. Because this listening audience, A, is most likely to vote intelligently, and Mm -hmm. B, share whatever it is that they agree with or disagree with, with their friends who don't listen to talk radio. And they will be very influential. Exactly. If politicians don't listen to talk radio, Mm -hmm. I think, you you know, I just, my opinion, I I think, uh, there's nothing wrong with music radio. I love music radio, too. And I'm not saying you should be 100% of your time listening to talk radio. Mm Mm-hmm. But I do think that if you were an elected official or an elected official wannabe, you know, you have aspirations, you should probably listen to what's being talked about by the people. And where's the best place other than talk radio? Exactly. I mean, unless you get somebody who hogs the airwaves without letting people call in, mm-hmm. you know, then you're going to get one-sided stuff. But if you listen to most local shows, most local shows like ours, mm-hmm. um, open the phone lines and you hear from both sides. I can't tell you how many times I've been... Uh, Outdone by our listeners, you know they've disagreed with me to the point where I, I surrendered. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! All right, I well, know you're. I will make it through the morning. <laughs> All right, so anyway, seven thirty-five. I guess we'll do that. Uh, Eight thirty-five. We'll read the news if I can. 
Yeah. Uh, News Bites. 9.05. I don't need to speak a whole lot during that segment. That's when Hank Whittier comes in here and brings you Veterans News. He does this every Thursday, as you know. Mm -hmm. Last week I had a cover for him, though. Yeah, you did. I'm glad he didn't ask me today. Yeah. Uh, Mark Bacon is coming in at 9.35. He's one degree away from Kevin Bacon, by the way. Yeah, he is. He's probably his twin. (laughs) (laughs) He's a, a journalist and he's a writer of commercials. Commercials. I write commercials sometimes when, yes, they, when they ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I like yours. Yours are good. Uh, he's the founder of a marketing company. Anyway, he's going to tell about his book. It's called Death in Nostalgia City. So he has, uh, you know, kind of done something different than what he normally does. He was a contributor to the Denver Post, mm-hmm. the Washington Post, Trailer Life. <laughs> Trailer Life. <laughs> I guess there's a magazine. There's out a there. magazine called Trailer yeah. Life. Yeah, <laughs> and Working Woman. Yeah, working woman. That's a good one too. Yeah, I mean, that's about. I don't see any working man on there. <laughs> All right. Uh, so then the next segment we have today is Frankie Bailey. Yep. Uh, she, she is a wonderful lady. associate professor in the School of Criminal Justice. Has written a book called "The Red Queen Dies." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When they don't know me, they're going to hear this voice and say, goodness, goodness, <laughs> who am I talking to? Uh, let's see. Let's talk golf today, 10, 10.05. Jim Beckett will be here talking to you about golf. Yep. He's and great. He's a lot of fun. 10.35, Joseph uh, Yusinski is coming on. He teaches courses on American politics. I can't wait to talk to him about that fan incident last night. <laughs> he's written a very interesting book called American Conspiracy Theories. Yep. He cracks open the mysteries behind the conspiracy phenomenon. I can't wait to hear what he's got to say. Yeah. Renee Genther is coming in with Dr. Ivan Levinrad uh, at, the, at 11.05. Uh, they are guests of our friends from Ocala Health and Strive Rehabilitation. The three ladies that usually invite the guests are Suzanne Santangelo, Leah Caruso, and Brittany Marthaler. Yep. And so they have invited uh, Renee and Dr. Levinrad to come in to speak to us about navigating the cancer Diagnosis. Mm-hmm. If you've if you've been diagnosed with cancer, what to expect? Uh, Renee actually uh, is a patient, right? A pa- oh, oh, she's a patient navigator. Oncologist. On, okay, and, so and never mind. I thought she was a patient. She's not a patient. No. She's a patient navigator. She's okay. got all those big letters behind her name. Yeah, just like me, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Which you're not. <laughs> I know. I don't disc. Jo- I don't dock any discs. No, there aren't any discs to be jockeyed anymore. All right, I'm fun, fun with Joe today. I have uh, some Disney questions for you and Joe. Oh, Every cool. question has eight words in the question. Oh. Which is just. Wow, uh, that's hard. <laughs> eight words in the question. Eight words in the question. You have to either tell me the name of the film or the name of the character that I'm asking for. Okay. 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 And there's Tom that. Schmitz. Tom Schmitz always morning, sounds Tom. this way. He always sounds this way. He's got hot blue <laughs> shorts laughing. on today. He's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't do that on the mic. I'm supposed to have a cough button, aren't I? Oh, that's right. You are. Anyway, on when Galen is on, I thought this was kind of funny. Um, I, I, there was a there was an article about how uh, women are treated differently than men, which is nothing new. No. <laughs> but this, this, guy just, uh, this guy was talking to his, uh, a, a lady friend of his, and she was telling she doesn't like to wear the black tight pants because the guys always look at her butt. Well. So he decided to put on the tight black pants and see if anybody would look at his butt. <laughs> and did it happen? Yeah, people were looking at his butt. Good. He was bent over in the, the trunk of his car. <laughs> of course. <laughs> to, it, to, to conceal his gender, and then and then they were videotaping people walking past, checking them out. Oh. Wow. Anyway, so it, it, one thing standard. led to the next, and, and I wish I had a whole list of those kinds of things that would be fun. But instead, I ended up going to the truck driver's <laughs> site. <laughs> and truck drivers have a whole vocabulary. Uh, truck driver slang, that's kind of funny. This is CB slash truck driver slang. So. I will tell you what they are. Next time you listen to your CB, you'll be more informed. Nice. More informed about what these slang words mean. Cool. They're fun. All right. Anything else in the news? So, so after the break, we're going to. Uh, I'm going to show you the soundbite from last night's um, governor's debate, where the electric fan in Charlie Crist's podium mm-hmm. was a big issue, apparently. Gosh. <laughs> and, that, and they will try to make it a little bit more serious by talking about the real things they should have been talking about. <laughs> 
Uh, not that they didn't talk about real things. I'm, it wasn't just about the fan, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, anything else I need to tell you? I guess that's it. All right, we'll take a little break, and we will be right back. And my voice will be back to normal, probably in a week or so. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. News Radio. I'm Steve Rappaport. The second Dallas nurse infected with Ebola may have put others at risk. While she is now isolated, she did travel by air on Monday, the day before she felt feverish. She flew Frontier Airlines Flight 1143 from Cleveland to Dallas-Fort Worth, and now the CDC wants to interview more than 130 other people who were on that flight. Fox Radio's Eben Brown in Dallas. President Obama wants the CDC to respond to future Ebola cases within 24 hours. Hurricane Gonzalez Gonzalo back to Category 4 strength, the storm on track to hit Bermuda tomorrow. A Kansas City sweep. 29 years of frustration has ended. The Royals are going to the World Series. Courtesy TBS, the Royals taking out the Baltimore Orioles 2-1, and the San Francisco Giants beat the St. Louis Cardinals 6-4. The Giants lead the NLCS three games to one. Fox News, we report, you decide. On your time. The Fox News iPad app is ready to go with all the great features from FoxNews.com and our iPhone app optimized specifically for your iPad. Watch the latest clips from your favorite Fox News shows. Personalize the app by creating your own newscast using the video playlist. Listen to Fox News Radio Live. Get local weather forecasts. And it's all free. Go to FoxNews2Go.mobi. That's Fox News, the number two, go.mobi. Some people would call him a loser. He ran for state office. He was beaten. He started a business. He failed. He ran for Congress. He lost. He was nominated for vice president. He lost again. But he knew only those who never tried are the real losers. And Abraham Lincoln was no loser. Persistence. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. I'm Major George Patterson from the Salvation Army. Please stop by our family store at 120 Northwest 10th Street in Ocala, where on Wednesday you have a 50% off clothing and bric-a-brac. On Friday, 25% off furniture and large appliances. And on Saturday, stop by to our yard sale from 845 to 11. Donations can be made by calling 352-732-4469 and we'll pick it up. Funds from the store go toward the services that we provide in Marion County. Hi, my name is Dr. Erica Alstein with A Better You Healthcare Acupuncture and Eastern Medicine. As primary care physicians, we use acupuncture to treat back pain, arthritis, migraines, allergies, high blood pressure, thyroid disorders, hormone imbalances, stress, and more using all natural medical therapies. We treat the source of your problems, not just your symptoms. For more information, go to abetteryouhealthcare.com or call today to set up your appointment, 352-615-5566. News Talk 1370, WOCA invites you to discover your full business potential. News Talk Radio is the perfect environment for your advertising. WOCA's News Talk format pinpoints information hungry, better educated, high income adults. So use us to talk to them. Call 732-8000. 732-8000. We're Ocala News Talk Radio. News Talk 1370, WOCA. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara. And me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment. Right here on WOCA The Source. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, and a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. 
Now is the time to take advantage of Florida Credit Union CD specials. Our 36-month CD comes in at 1.26% APY, a 24-month that's working for you at 1.0% APY, and our 12-month at 0.75% APY. All CD rate specials require $10,000 minimum. With friendly service and rates like these, it's not hard to see why Florida Credit Union has your CD options covered. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Call 352-237-8222 for more information. Must act by 11514. All right, uh, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Oh, man, my voice still sounds this way. <laughs> uh, well, good morning. Thank you for tuning in. We have, uh, do we have a ribbon cutting, Robin? Yes, we do. Somewhere, do you remember where it is? Yes. Oh, do I have it up here somewhere? Yes, you do. I'll find it. Here it is. The ribbon cutting is? It's on Friday. Friday. Friday at the Ranch Fitness Center and Spa. The ribbon cuttings, if you don't already know are something that the Chamber and Economic Partnership do. They also make sure that you know through us, I guess that we're the, the go-to people to let you all know that well, you are invited to these things. We're the ambassadors. We are the ambassadors. W-O-C-A, Joe Martone, Dan Martone, the, the, we're all the ambassadors. The Ranch Fitness Center and Spa is my favorite salad dressing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ranch is there. Uh, they are in on top of the world at the Circle, Circle Square Commons area. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you know where that is, and uh, they're doing this at nine this morning. Oh no, Friday morning, nine Friday morning, mm -hmm. nine o'clock Friday morning. I sound bad. I don't feel bad. I just sound bad. Yeah, good. I'm glad. Before I tell you about, and we talk about the debate last night between Scott and Chris. Can I tell you a, a very, very Paul Harvey kind of a story? Oh sure. I love this story. It's not about Paul Harvey. It's just when I read this, I thought if I read this. On the air, I'm going. Uh, I'm going to sound like Paul Harvey. Not that my voice will sound like his, but <laughs> the kind of story Paul Harvey would have told, like the rest of the story. There's a guy named Ron. I'll try to do it my own way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy named Ron, and he has a wife named Lisa, and they have a, ten, uh, a six year old boy named Shane. And they uh, were very attached to their Irish wolfhound named Belker. Uh, Belker was ten years old and had uh, cancer. Oh. The doctor examined Belker and found that he was, in fact, dying of that cancer. And the doctor told the family he could not do anything to help. So he offered to perform euthanasia for the dog in their home. Oh. Ron and Lisa told him that they thought it would be good for their six-year-old to be there during the procedure. They felt Shane might learn something from the experience. On Belker's last day, Shane was calm. He petted the dog as if he understood that he was saying a last goodbye. Oh. Within minutes, Belker slipped peacefully away. Shane seemed to accept Belker's transition without any difficulty mm -hmm. or confusion. They all sat together after Belker's death, wondering allowed how sad it is that animals live shorter lives than humans and Shane remember Shane is only six years old had been listening quietly and then he said I know why dogs don't live as long as humans he said people are born so that they can learn how to live a good life like loving everybody all the time and being nice the six-year-old said well dogs already know how to do that. Oh. So they don't need to live as long as we do. Isn't that oh, amazing? Isn't that a beautiful six, story? Yeah. Six years old. We have so. to live 70 years before we figure out how to be kind to everybody. Yeah. We have to live 80 years before we figure out that nobody is inferior to us. Mm -hmm. Dogs don't discriminate on color. No. They don't discriminate on age. Mm -mm. I know my old female dog loves sniffing a young male dog. She couldn't care less the age difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, they just, I mean, it's a really good good thing. I mean, you see dogs playing as if they're puppies, even if they are 15 years old. Yeah. Maybe not as frisky as a, as a baby dog, as a puppy, but I just love that story. I wanted to share it with you. It's a wonderful I didn't mean story. To make, I didn't mean to tear you up, Robin. I'm sorry. So but I'm raspy so and you're crying. <laughs> What a morning team we are. I know. We're, just <laughs> we're a mess. <laughs> All right. So that, that was a great story. So profound what you said. 
I just, I just thought, I know we have a lot of dog lovers in our listening audience. Yeah. I just thought I'd share that. Hopefully, my voice isn't ruining the delivery, but. No, it's not. You can hear everything I'm saying? Yeah, you can hear it from my end. You sound great. I don't, 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 don't. I don't sound like that, right? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you might inside your ears, but oh. not on the outside. <laughs> Ooh. I got to cough, Larry. Dread. I love that story. That's just that's such a wonderful story. I mean, little children have a lot mm. of wisdom, they have keen life observations. And, uh, you know, those are dismissed by the adults in the world. We should never, ever dismiss the observations. So I'm going to take child. that advice. I'm going to take the, uh, he didn't mm-hmm. intend for it to be advice, but I'm going to use that advice. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm almost 60. I'm going to stop worrying. I'm just going to be playful. Yeah. I'm going to sniff everything that looks like it should be sniffed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just go for the gold. Just go for it. <laughs> I'm going to wag my tail when a pretty woman comes in here, and I'm just going to say, hey, 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 how about it? How about it? How about it? There you go. Just just go for it. Just live life. <laughs> all, right, all right. Wonderful. Right. So last night there was the governor's debate. <laughs> Most people are not talking about the content of the debate. They're talking about four minutes. <laughs> Well, I guess you could say four minutes of the debate, or you could say four minutes before the debate. I don't know. But let me play the sound. If you didn't hear it, this is the sound. I don't know the names of the uh, panelists. I'm sorry. Uh, But obviously, the two candidates who were debating were Governor Rick Scott and former Governor Charlie Crist. Mm -hmm. Absent, noticeably, notably was uh, Adrian Wiley, who should have been there, according yep. to the rules. They didn't let him be there. He's on the ballot. They wouldn't let him be there. No. Which is, which is crazy. That's just as crazy. That is just as crazy as this. So let me play the sound from last night. Of, and I'll tell you in advance, it's not a spoiler. It's just fun to listen to. What happened is there was a fan in Charlie Crist's uh, podium. podium. And there was uh, and it was not supposed to be one, according to Rick Scott. So here, anyway, here's the... Uh, the sound from last night. The two candidates who were invited to take part in this debate right now are not stepping up on the stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have an extremely peculiar situation right now. We have Governor Charlie Chris. Florida Governor Rick Scott, our incumbent governor and the Republican candidate for governor is also in the building. Governor Rick Scott, we have been told that Governor Scott will not be participating in this debate. Now, let me explain what this is all about. Governor Christ has asked to have a fan, a small fan, placed underneath his podium. The rules of the debate that I was shown by the Scott campaign say that there should be no fan. Somehow there is a fan there and for that reason, ladies and gentlemen, I am being told that Governor Scott really? will not join us for this debate. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is a debate. Rosemary Goudreau, I don't know what can what can we say? Uh, well, that's the ultimate pleading well, of the fifth I've ever heard in my life. We're not, Florida aren't Governor, gonna Governor, we're not get to hear. We're not. We're, we're not asking a you a question. Future. We're not asking a question of Governor Crisp. So I'm asking saying Rosemary about the situation that we have find ourselves in. Governor Governor yeah, Crisp, do do the rules of the debate say that there should be no fan? Not that I'm aware of. So the the rules that the Scott campaign just showed us that says that no electronics can be used. Are we really going to debate about a fan? Or are we going to talk about education and the environment and the future of our state? I mean, really. There are serious issues facing our state, and it's like funding education appropriately, Frank, protecting our environment, making sure we have ethical, honest leadership. Uh, Governor. I mean, if he's going to give it to me, I'm going to take it. This is not, this is not, this is not, 
This is not a platform for one candidate. Uh, we're hoping that Governor Scott will join us on the stage, well, and I am great. told that Governor Scott will join us on the stage. In all fairness to, the, to Governor Scott, I was shown a copy of the rules that they showed me that said there would be no fans uh, on the podium. And, <laughs> My understanding is that Governor Scott will be coming out. Not in my life. This is just so crazy, isn't this? It is. Right. It's Have you ever really seen anything like this? They're both babies. No, this is uh, uh, babies. remarkable oh, for sort of a Sorry. trivial issue, no matter which side you believe you're on. Um, I place in the awkward situation of having to decide this, and I don't think it's our role. The, the applause right there at that point, and that's how far the audio bite went, but the applause was when uh, Rick Scott finally walked out. Oh, okay. And uh, so what a, what a crazy, crazy thing. Yeah. Um, all right, let's take a couple of calls. And, uh, and, and, and just if I could just tell you this, that the, uh, the argument from the watchdog groups that are posting on Facebook and Twitter and wherever else they do these things say that even the, even the issues that they did talk about in the content of the debate after the whole fan stuff was done uh, didn't really touch on the things that should be important to most Floridians like taxes and uh, and gambling and the infrastructure. I, right. don't, I don't know exactly what they said because I didn't actually watch the whole thing. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Hey, it's me, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, and you know, what grade are these guys in? You know? <laughs> You're right. They're both of them. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. Acting out. I think both parties should flush both of these guys. Just dump them now and put two different ones up. Neither one of these guys deserves to be governor, period. End of discussion. I mean, over a fan? I mean, they're going to stomp their feet and, 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 ah, it, it, one of the most shameful displays I have seen in a long time. I, I, bar none. It was like, it was uh, nothing they had to say after that mattered because they both killed their credibility. Period. It showed something. Yeah. Anything they might say now is just lost in there. You know how? Well, if I can't have my way, I'm just not going to play. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's what that's what it looked like. Yeah, sure did. Disgraceful. It's absolutely disgraceful. Let me tell you, let me, parties, let me the tell Republicans you, and the Democrats need to flush these me, two guys. Let me just share with and you. And start over with nobody fresh. Let me just share with you the silver lining, though. It's this radio show is the silver line. I get to use it and have fun with it. That's right. You do. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. That's the silver lining. I get to All play. Right, you have a great day. Hey, by the way. Yeah. Grandchild number 24. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Shiloh was born yesterday. I, I saw Wendy. That. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, wow. No, no, I didn't know that one. That okay, one. well, yeah, thank I just post. I just posted it on my Facebook page. Oh, that's yeah. sweet, too. Thank you, Tom. Thanks that's for good. letting us know. What's wrong with the button here? Here we go. Thank you, Tom. Know. Hold on, let me push your button and get somebody go. else. Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning. Uh, Larry, Larry, I enjoyed uh, hearing that, uh, it, the thing that you reported about the dog. That was really... That was ah, thanks. Very yeah, good. Yeah. Um, but as far as that, I watched the uh, most of the uh, debate, but they did touch on some things. But the fan, uh, Charlie Chris used the fan before. He always used the fan. Uh, when it makes he ran sense. the first time, um, it, it's a, it, you know, they even pointed it out the other, in the uh, in the paper. So, but um, quite frankly, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not that overwhelmed with either one of them, but I'm probably a little biased because I worked for HCA when we lost all that money behind uh, Governor Scott, and four people did go to jail behind that. Some of them I knew of. Uh, some of them were from Florida, as a matter of fact. Uh, they they didn't get a lot of time, but they did get some time. But it was childish in, in regards to the fan, and I think um, Governor Scott's uh, campaign people finally uh, common sense prevailed, and they went on out and had the debates. But uh, because of my relationship with, with Governor Scott, I wouldn't vote for him. But I'm going to be honest with you, both of them are not the greatest, 
And I, I was hoping that they would have that the independent guy included. But uh, the big bucks, man. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, yeah that's what it sounds like. The, sure the, does. The big bucks. Thank you, you Larry. Guys have a good day. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. My feeling about Governor Scott is based on some of the crazy answers that he gave reporters. When people would ask him questions, like after he gets off of a podium and after everything, all the all the prepared stuff is done, and he's walking, and they just put a microphone to his face, and rather than really answer the question, he would he would read or say something that seemed like a memorized piece that didn't even seem to answer the question Mm -hmm. um and it just did not look good i mean you know we've chatted with governor scott when he when he was first elected he would call my phone my cell phone yeah he had you and he would say can we go on the radio sure it'd be Mm -hmm. cool and he'd come on he was kind of cool he was kind of conversational yeah actually very conversational now that doesn't mean i agreed or disagreed with everything it just means that he was willing to actually talk and actually express his thoughts. And if you disagree, well, that's the way it is. That's the way it is when you actually chat and you express your honest opinion about things. You will disagree. I disagree with you, Robin, sometimes, and you disagree with me sometimes. It doesn't mean the end of our friendship right? or the end of respect for one another. And the same thing would be true for any elected official. So I think when they put the microphone to his face and he just avoids expressing what he really feels about whatever the question is, mm-hmm. it, it looks bad on him. And I don't know when that happened or why that happened in the course of his uh, his governorship, but mm-hmm. uh, but it really looks bad. And and then a- absolutely the thing last night made him look really bad. Yeah. I mean, uh, it made Charlie Chris look good, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, but it made, I think, it, and I'm not picking on either one of them. I, 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 when I say I would like Adrian Wiley to be included in on the debates, it's not because I'm supporting Adrian Wiley. I'm supporting the the process of trying to figure out who we should vote for. Yeah, that's what I'm supporting. I mean, I may not like Wiley at all mm-hmm. if I hear him talk and hear. I've I've read some of the stuff he's written, but you know, I'd like to see the guy in action and I'd like to really get to know him. It's not fair to the people for Wiley not to be included not, in the if, debates. If how many, not how, fair. You already voted. You did the absentee ballot. Yes, how I many did. names are actually on the ballot? Uh, five. Five. So all five candidates mm-hmm. should be in the debate. If yeah. they qualify to be on the ballot, they should be in the debate. That's right. That should be the answer to that question. All right. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. If the Libertarian candidate had been included, he would have looked like Winston Churchill compared <laughs> to those two clowns up there last night. <laughs> Yeah. I can't I can't imagine Governor Scott handling that situation any worse than, than, than he and his staff did. That was somebody on, on the news, I think it was on Fox News, somebody said it looked like a Saturday Night Live skit and it really did. It was yes. it was it was comical, but unfortunately yes. we're talking about the people who are gonna lead our, our state government. That's Isn't that's that, really sad. I thing. know. Hey, uh, you know, Wiley must be ecstatic this morning. That's what oh, I think. Yeah. 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 Except except for this. Robin and Pete and everybody. The one problem is that most people don't listen to talk radio. Most people don't pay attention to what's going on. They don't even know the name Adrian Wiley. Exactly. That's the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, right. Larry. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, if you want to call, I would love to hear what you have to say. Six two two nine six two two. I do need to take a little break. I'm kind of really late with this, but let me take that break right now since nobody's on the line, and we'll be back. If you call right now, you'll be on hold through the break, which is about two minutes long. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunshine today and quite pleasant with lower humidity, the high 79 to 83. Tonight will be clear and cool with lows ranging from the mid-50s in a few inland spots to about 61 at the coast. Mostly sunny and delightful tomorrow, the high 78 to 82. On Saturday, plenty of sunshine and pleasant, the high 81 to 85. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. 
News Talk 1370, WOCA invites you to discover your full business potential. News Talk Radio is the perfect environment for your advertising. WOCA's News Talk format pinpoints information-hungry, better-educated, high-income adults. So use us to talk to them. Call 732-8000. 732-8000. We're Ocala News Talk Radio. News Talk 1370, WOCA. All right, thank you for our listening. Five minutes before 8 o'clock, we have somebody on the phone. Thank you for waiting. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. This is John. I, I just moved to Ocala from the Orlando area, and I want to first of all say you have a great show, and I'm really happy there's a good show on talk radio that I can hear on the, in the morning. No, thank you for um, that. You know, and I just want to let you know I've been listening to comments about the fan incident last night. I, I, I've been in a few public speaking, I'm sure you have as well, situations. I, I, these folks lay out these ground rules for a reason. No one seems to be giving any credit to the people who put the rules together. I, I mean, it may seem childish to some, but, you know, if Charlie Chris needs a fan so people can't see him sweat when he's having to answer tough questions, I think there's are some reasons behind the request not to have a fan that people are kind of discounting. It, it might have been handled poorly, but uh, unfortunately, I think Scott would have looked like the better man if he had just gone up and said, Okay, I'm willing to have the debate, but please be aware that these rules are there for a reason. I think that would have that would have probably yeah. given him a few more yeah. points. Yeah. You know? I don't really know. I haven't seen the rules. Uh, Tom Schmitz was saying it didn't say fans specifically. It said electronics, and and referred referring to like you know, you know iPads and things like that. I don't know. Oh yeah, but then then it gets then it gets crazy. Then I, you, you know it is it is unfortunate. Charlie, I, I, you know Governor Scott was at a, a local event down there in Orlando with us, a small group, and uh, he, he does he's extremely personable in small groups. Um, and uh, you're absolutely right. He comes across very stiff, uh, unfortunately, and I don't believe, I think a lot of it's just his personality as opposed to Chris. Uh, he's much more gregarious. But uh, you look at the substance of the issues that we stand for, uh, you know, I think certainly the people in Ocala from the people I've met are, are more inclined to vote for someone who's uh, got more conservative values. Um, but that's just my take on the whole thing. Uh, that's I probably... Sure hope this didn't do, I hope this didn't do a lot of damage to Chris, to, excuse me, to Scott's campaign. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. He's, he's a good man. He's a good man. <clears throat> All right, thanks. I, that I, pre- I All right, I appreciate the call. Let me, let me just hey. say so, thank you. What the caller actually is pointing out is something that I've known forever, because you and I have done, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, pa- we've been panelists on debates before. Yes. And some very, very, very... Uh, well-spoken, intelligent people just don't do debates well. Mm-hmm. So it it is a track record. If if debates are not going to work well for you as a candidate, then you must depend on your track record and let the voters decide based on that. Obviously, debate isn't for everybody. I, I'll never forget we had a, uh, a was it a school board school board a debate. school board debate that we were panelists on, and uh, we knew everybody. I mean, because it was local, so we knew them all. We knew everybody who was running. And uh, it was interesting to see that some of the most well-spoken, uh, most articulate, um, with the great ideas, the candidates with, with that fit those qualities, they would get up there and t- freeze. Yeah, this, this, they this, would. this debate I'm referring to was also televised. Mm-hmm. I had them in the studio uh, at, the, at the Cascades when we were over there. And they did not freeze up at the microphone, at, like on radio only. Right. But, but when it was TV and you had the lights, it became a very, very different uh, situation for them. Yeah, it did. It felt bad for them. And you know, when you when you have bright lights in your face, it's very difficult to see anybody on the other side of those lights. Mm-hmm. You know that from stage performing. I mean, you can imagine if you put, you know, if you're new to this. Now, both these guys are not really new to this, though. But somebody running for the school board, they are new. They you typically haven't run for anything before. Exactly. You know, when, when those folks get together. So I guess the lesson learned, in, in addition to the fact that it's just fun as a radio host to be able to have something like that to talk about, mm-hmm. but the real good lesson, which that last caller did make me remember, is that sometimes debates are not the best way to make a decision about who to vote for, but rather past record. And in this case, you have a former governor who has a past record, right. and, you, and you have a governor who has a past record. Yes. And so you hold those two records up, and uh, 
So that was a really great point. Great point. All right, we uh, need to move forward. <laughs> any, yes. hope, any hope that my voice will improve in the next six minutes? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, what are we doing at the bottom? Oh, news oh, bites at the top, bottom. I mean, at the top. Okay, Galen, Galen you know. Galen. Oh, yes, trucker, CB trucker slang. That's right. It's <laughs> <laughs> fun topic. All right, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. We're learning it was the nation's top health agency that green-lighted travel for the second U.S. nurse with Ebola while she showed symptoms. She had a fever of 99.5, and the CDC said that because it was under 100 and 100.4, that she was okay to travel. We're told now, after this fiasco, CDC considering placing at-risk people on a no-fly list at this point. Fox's Casey Stiegel in Dallas outside the hospital where Amber Vincent works. She's been moved to Atlanta's Emory Hospital while nurse Nina Pham remains in Dallas. 75 of her colleagues here who had some sort of exposure to Thomas Duncan while he was an inpatient at this hospital continue to be monitored. Stock markets around the world continuing their sell-off and Hurricane Gonzalo, a Category 4, taking aim at Bermuda. Fox News, we report, you decide. Fox News Early Prime, breaking down business news and its impact on your bottom line. Your world with Neil Cavuto. That's how I do business. That's why I am business. Bold positions and brash opinions on the topics America is buzzing about. The five. How do you think this will set in with the American people? This will be the pulse of the nation. Washington insight and political know-how from the best in the Beltway. Special report with Brett Bay. The epicenter of the political world is here. The number one place for fair and balanced coverage. Fox News Channel. What's wrong with working hard to make our lives and our kids' lives better. Nothing. At Fox Business, we don't have a problem with success. We have a very big problem with those who get in the way of it. We don't come out of the box bashing those who make money. Just the politicians stealing it and the bureaucracies wasting it. We're not just sitting behind a desk. We're out in the field, on the floor, with the folks. Because when a story moves forward, so do we. Fox Business, the power to prosper. Check your local listings. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall -wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Yeah, Lance. Yes, George. I'm royalty at Devon Self Storage now on Highway 200 across from Hobby Lobby. It says right here in this letter. George, I read that letter too, and it's Devon's loyalty rewards. Pay three months in advance, get 5% off. Pay six months in advance, get 7% off. Pay 12 months in advance and get 10% off. See, Alice, Devon Self Storage treats me like royalty. Just call them at 873-0777. Yes, George, yes. Look who just walked in the room, Joe Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joe, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joe, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. Are you wasting hundreds or thousands of dollars on termite retreat fees? If you're not with Turner Pest Control, you probably are. Turner Pest Control offers the industry's only termite and pest control package that never charges retreat fees, ever. You can get started today for only $99. This is a value of $500 or more. This includes treatments, installation of monitoring stations, quarterly pest control, and a lifetime guarantee, all for an unbelievable low $99.